Okay, you've probably seen ChatGPT being used for things like creating course content, creating outlines, video scripts, and a lot more. But what if I told you that AI enhanced learning can be so much more? By integrating different tools like ChatGPT, MidJourney, inworld.ai, we can take learning and development to new heights. So imagine for a minute that you're a learner. Maybe you just took a change management course or you watched a video about engaging with different stakeholders and having those important conversations. Or you just have a new project starting and you want to be able to practice conversations with different stakeholder groups in a safe environment. So this is a landing page where our learners could go to do that. It's an example stakeholder engagement exercise. So we have a short video walking them through the exercise, giving them tips and information on what they need to know. We have the instructions, how it works. So first they'll learn about the project. Then they're going to talk to the AI stakeholders. They're going to try to get their support. And then afterwards they can debrief with the post-exercise chat. Here they have the scenario details, so some information about the company that they're using for the scenario Nexa Connect. They provide telecommunication services, and they have quite a bit of employees, so this project's going to be a pretty big change for them. The project itself is the ChatGPT project, so they're implementing an AI-powered chatbot to serve different customers that they have and then they're also going to have an ai powered knowledge management system so it's a significant change for the organization and it's going to need a lot of support from different stakeholder groups scrolling down we have the stakeholders themselves so i only built in three stakeholder groups but there's definitely a lot more we could have done for this we have the regional managers underneath the stakeholder group it gives a specific goal for the interaction with them and then a background about each individual and the option to talk to them. So our second group is our customer service managers, the direct supervisors for our customer service representatives who have a little bit different needs as far as change management goes. And then the customer service representatives who are probably the most impacted group and being able to address their concerns about potential job loss, learning curves, and the impact on customers themselves. At the end, we have our post-exercise chat done in Poe that learners can use to reflect on their experience and get some tips for future use. So going back up, I'll show you what a conversation looks like with one of our AI stakeholders. So here's our regional manager group. Our goal is to get their commitment as project sponsors and make sure they are able to provide the resources and support that we need for the project. We have two, we have Anita, who is an experience manager with 15 years of experience, and she oversees operations in five customer service centers. Then we have Carlos, he's been with the company for eight years, and he oversees four centers. So we'll go ahead and look at Carlos. I'm gonna click the Talk Now button. And then this will open up the InWorld AI chat for us. We can change our preferences, so we're gonna have our sound on. And we'll turn on our microphone too, so that I can talk instead of type. Hey there, Cambria. What brings you by today? Hi, Carlos. I was hoping to talk to you a little bit about our chat GPT project that we have going on. How are you? Hey, Cambria. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So tell me more about this chat GPT integration. How can it help us improve our customer service? Sure. So as you might know, we're looking at a chat GPT bot for our customers. Our goal is to help give them more information quicker and be able to help them easily find information without having to wait for our customer service representative so that our customer service team can focus on more complex cases. That sounds like a great idea, Tembria. We want our customers to feel supported and valued, and implementing ChatGPT could definitely help with that. I'm interested in learning more about the specifics of the project. How does the technology work, and what kind of support do we need to provide for our team to make sure they're comfortable using it? Sure, I'd be happy to set up some time for you to meet with our IT team who could tell you more about the technology side of it. As far as supports, as we go through this project, we're going to learn more about what our customer service team members need. So that might be training. We could be looking at some different job aids. It's really going to be based on what their needs are. That sounds great, Tembria. 
I'm always interested in learning more about how we can improve our technology and better support our team. Let's set up a meeting with the RIT team and make sure we're all on the same page. I'm excited to see how ChatGPT can help us take our customer service to the next level. Thank you. I'm excited too. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you is if there are any concerns you think your team members might have with this and in your role as a sponsor for this project, how you might be able to help alleviate some of those concerns. That's a great question. Cambria, I think some of our team members might be concerned about the integration of new technology into our existing infrastructure. It can be intimidating to learn something new, especially if it's something that you're not familiar with. As a sponsor for this project, I believe it's my responsibility to help alleviate those concerns and make sure that everyone is comfortable with the changes. So that was our conversation with our stakeholder, Carlos. We have some other stakeholders we could talk to too. We have our customer service managers and then our customer service representatives. And each conversation is going to be a little bit different because they do have different concerns. They have different needs related to their position and how the project is gonna affect them. So here I will click on Lucas. He is a bilingual customer service representative. I'm going to go ahead and leave the sound off for this one so that I could talk to you a little bit. So Lucas starts, hi Cambria, how can I assist you? I'm just going to say, hey Lucas, what have you heard about our project? And so Lucas writes back here, you can see they do use the emojis a little bit. So he looks like he's a little bit upset. He said he's learned, heard a lot about it as a bilingual representative. He's always looking for ways to improve communication. He thinks that has a lot of potential, but there's concerns with implementation and how customers are supported. So then we can continue that with him, learn a little bit more about what those needs are. So once we finish talking to all of our stakeholders, we can scroll down to the final post exercise chat debrief. I'll click chat now, and this will open up a chat bot in Poe says, hey there, change manager, let's talk about your experience with the exercise, how was it? So I'm just going to say it was challenging a little. And then the chat bot comes back, they wanna know what specific challenges I had. I'll say interacting with Emily was difficult. I didn't know how to address job related concerns. So here the chatbot will just continue. They'll listen to what I'm saying, give me some tips, ask me questions. So did you try to gather more information to better understand her concerns? I did I did not do that. I'm not sure how. So then it'll give me examples of what I could do and we could continue this conversation just to really reflect on my experience and see what improvements I could make in the future. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the process for creating this. So there was a lot of different roles technology played and myself as a human behind it. The main one being ChatGPT. So I use that to do the stakeholder profile and personas, generate the scenario with Nexa Connection and the project that they were going to be having, and then creating learner instructions for that web page and the video script. Then from there, I use Midjourney to create the avatar images and inworld.ai to make the actual avatar itself, do the profile autocomplete, adjust that, and then have that chat conversation functionality. And then using Poe for the post exercise debrief and other tools like Canva for making the video and the strikingly template for the web page itself. My role for this was really the ideation coming up with the idea for this. For a real learning and development context, this might have been part of a needs analysis, being able to bring that information into this too, making sure there's alignment. And then selecting the right tools to use for this and coordinating between them. So moving the information from chat GPT into inworld.ai, being able to do the prompts and the inputs to get that, and then testing and reviewing this too. Now I'll show you how to create a character in InWorld. So if you're new to InWorld, you'll go to inworld.ai and you can click get started for free to create an account. For me, I already have one, so it's going to open up to my character list. Here we have the stakeholders 
like Anita Carlos. We have David going down. I have some characters that were not part of this one. We have Gil, the performance improvement specialist, and Landy, our L&D helper. So to edit these, you can click edit, and that shows you what's behind the scenes as far as the description of the character, their identity, personality traits, knowledge, and more. To create a new character, we'll create one by clicking the Create New Character button. I'm going to name this character Cecilia, and she is going to be our customer service liaison. The description I have here is from ChatGPT, and it provides some information about Cecilia, what her role is for interacting with the user. You'll see here it says player. That's because this is a gaming system to create game characters, so we're using a little bit of that language instead of learner or user. And then we'll click auto-generate to create Cecilia's character. They'll go through and set the personality based on this description, and we can make adjustments as needed based on what the profile chat GPT created is. Now I'll click continue to character creation. So here I'll put in that description again, and we'll see Cecilia has a moderate change resistant level. She's open to new ideas, but cautious about the impact on customers. Up here at the top is where I can change the avatar image. So for that, I will open up Cecilia's image here and click OK. And then we can also go through and configure a 3D avatar. For that, I'll choose the body type and then pick a file so that we can use that just as a base here. It'll be the same image. And then it'll take just a few seconds to load in that avatar and then we can customize maybe the clothing if we want her to wear something a little bit more professional. And then we can customize the hair. I believe we had her with green hair. So that's what we'll add in here. Maybe a bit more curly. And this will work for now. So it'll take just a few seconds for Enrolled to build out that avatar. And then we can go through and change the different settings behind the system as far as Cecilia's motivations and her personality, and then use that to interact with her. And usually it takes less than 30 seconds to do this. So we'll give it just a minute here as it builds that character. Then we can click OK. Now here they started building out some already. Cecilia is motivated by ensuring customers are satisfied. Um, ChatGPT did have a little bit more to build in. And I will add that they do have character limits. So we're going to go ahead and delete some of that and just say Cecilia wants to ensure the tools are implemented in a way that benefits customers while maintaining high standards. Flaws and challenges for that. This is going to be Cecilia's concerns about the project. We do need to shorten it a bit because of the character limits. So I will just take out a little bit here and now we can go down. We have Cecilia's identity. So her pronouns are she, her. She's our customer service liaison, and she's also a key stakeholder. So I'm going to add that in. Stage of life is about middle adulthood. Here you can add in some hobbies and interests. InWorld already did this for us based on the description, so that's fine. We can adjust her personality. We have her as mostly positive, more open than cautious, an extrovert. I'm going to make her a little bit more confident in sharing her concerns. And then we have her as trusting. And then here is where we can build in the facts and knowledge. So I'm going to add in what ChatGPT told me about Cecilia, which is that she has a degree in communications and she previously worked as a customer service representative. So before we go on, I'm going to save this. And then adding in common knowledge, this is where we can get the information that the other characters have about the ChatGPT in integration project itself. And then we have common knowledge for Nexa Connect, the company, which I'll show you another place to add that into in just a minute. And then we can update her voice. I will just put her as April Willis. You could change the pitch and the talking speed too. And then if you want to, you can change the dialogue style. You can make her bubbly, more commanding, empathetic. 
And they also have one for villainous, which we won't use for this. I'm just going to leave it on the default. But there's a lot of interesting options there. So I will save this. Cecilia is almost ready to go. I'm going to go over here on the left to common knowledge and to our Nexa Connect knowledge base. This is where it describes the company, um, what they do, additional facts and information. And then we have the list of characters that have knowledge of that company. So we will add Cecilia to this list and then we'll save and train her. And now if I go back to my character list, Cecilia is on here. I'm gonna go to edit so we can verify that the knowledge saved which it did. Here we have both common knowledges on there for Nexa Connect and the ChatGPT integration project. Okay, so now we will test our chat with Cecilia. We'll say, hi, Cecilia, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. How can I assist you today? I would like to talk with you about our chat GPT project. Have you heard about it? Oh yes, the chat GPT project. I've heard quite a bit about it. It's an exciting venture that will streamline our customer service operations and improve response times. What can you tell me about the project? From a customer perspective, we are hoping they will have less wait time and can get help quicker. What do you think they might think about this? I think customers will definitely appreciate the reduced wait times and faster response rates. Quick and efficient service is vital in today's fast-paced world, and ChatGPT will make it easier for us to provide that to our valued customers. What concerns do you have or do you think customers may have? From my experience, customers are often concerned about the quality of service they receive. They may worry that an AI-powered system like ChatGPT may not be able to provide the same level of personalized service as a human representative. Additionally, some customers may have concerns about the privacy and security of their data when using a chatbot. Personally, I'm curious about how well ChatGPT will be able to handle complex customer inquiries that require more nuanced responses. I'm Cambria. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more content in the future, you can subscribe to the Innovation Lounge YouTube channel, a channel for learning and development professionals to learn about emerging AI technology and trends happening.